I only have one message to give you. I don't care what you think of me. I don't care what you call me. I do care what you do with this information because it is important to our survival as a species. You're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, tonight we're going to open the phones and uh, hear from the uh, listening audience. We've had uh, a week and uh, last night of uh, of you listening to me. Now tonight uh, everybody gets to listen to you. So it's going to be uh, open topic, open phone, open subject, open everything. Uh, I wasn't sure that we'd have a broadcast tonight because uh, all afternoon we've been having some pretty pretty good rain and uh, lots of lightning. And with lightning, I have to shut down the station. Can't broadcast. But the skies are not clear now, but there's no lightning and there's no thunder and uh, the rain has moved off to the east. And uh, so I decided to go ahead and, and do the broadcast live. But it was touch and go. So we're going we're gonna to open the phones and uh, let you guys have your say tonight. Whatever it is that, uh, that you've got on your mind. What's happening? What's going on in the world that uh, you want to talk about? Because that's what we're going to talk about tonight. 520-333-4578 is the number. We're going to take your calls for the whole broadcast. And uh, I'm trying to remember. Ah, there it is. 520-333-4578 is the number. Open topic. Open phones. You're the stars tonight. Good evening. You're on the air. Good evening, Mr. Cooper. There's a moon dog here. Uh, you may recognize my voice from other places. I have a question that some of your listeners might be able to answer. I heard tonight that the FBI has placed what they call a keystroke logger on a gentleman's computer. The case has gone to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has really chastised the FBI and asked them how they do this without getting a federal wiretap of authorization. The FBI refused to say how they do it because it's a matter of uh, national security, so to speak. I know nothing about this. I don't even own a computer. And I'm just wondering if some of your listeners uh, could uh, possibly enlighten us on this. I can tell you how. It's called tyranny. You go in and you scare people and you make them think that if they don't cooperate with you, they're going to get investigated and... Uh, uh, just about anybody will do damn near anything for any Fed that comes along because they're too stupid to realize that it's unconstitutional and that uh, when they allow it to be done to somebody else, they've all, uh, you know, when they take freedoms away from somebody else and protections away from someone else, they've also stripped themselves. Well, the, uh, the, the whole situation arose because the uh, FBI I know, suspected that I know, this I know person the, was using I know the that, advanced... I know the go technique for uh, transmitting. Uh, I know the case very well, and apparently you two do too. Why are you ducking around the fact that the the guy they put this on was a mafia guy? Uh, I am not. Hey, if they can do it to him, they can do it to us. That's right. But what I want to know is why are you dancing around it? Why didn't you? I, did, on I didn't know he was a mafia guy. I know he had an Italian name. Then how do you know so much about this case? I just heard it on the radio about uh, an hour ago. Okay, well, he's a, he's a mafia guy. He's a member of the mafia. There's no doubt about that. They're investigating. It, it doesn't make any difference. But, you know, I hate to have things slanted. If we're going to talk about something, I want the truth out in the open. So uh, he's, he's under investigation for criminal activity, and they think that he may have been using some code to communicate his criminal activity with. So they're, you know, they bugged his keyboard without a without a wiretap. How, how, do, how do they how do they do that? Do they got some sort of remote apparatus that can just pick be, all this stuff up? Just exactly like I told you. You see, if somebody has a meth lab, now I'm not condoning meth labs, but I'm using this as an example. If somebody has a meth lab here in this valley, okay. They're buying their chemicals here at the local drugstore or, or two cities away or something like that. And they're making methamphetamine right here. 
Okay? Gotcha. And they're selling it right here. They're not selling it anywhere else. They're not going across state lines or anything else. Why do the local police, who know damn well the feds have no authority, give the DEA the authority to bust these people and arrest them and imprison them on federal charges when they have no jurisdiction whatsoever, has nothing to do with interstate or international commerce? Uh, it must be simply a matter of their own ignorance. It's called stupid police chief. It's called a police chief who's really working for the feds instead of the community, and whenever he does that, he's declaring himself incompetent. In other words, he's saying to his community, I don't have the competence or the knowledge or the skill to handle these drug pop problems. So instead of trying to figure out how to get that and keep our jurisdiction and, and not have these incursions by the federal government outside their jurisdiction, uh, I'm going to call them in and let them handle it because... That's the easy way out, and it makes me look good. Uh, that's, that, that's lazy, too, besides being stupid. It's also treasonous. Yeah, I hear you. To the state of Arizona. He's allowing an outside jurisdiction to impinge upon the sovereignty of this state. Well, my, my, really, my real question is, how did the feds manage to get a hold of the keyboard signal without actually connecting physically with copper? to the computer. Well, that I don't know, but I bet you there's a 14-year-old kid out there who knows enough about computers that he could probably give us the answer in about 10 seconds flat. Well, <laughs> that's the guy I hope calls next or within the next, uh, within the next hour. Okay. Hey, I've said my word. I'll get off and let somebody else get in. Thanks. Thanks for calling. Good question. Real good question. How are they doing it? And why are they getting away from it? Yes. Uh, it, Gestapo, that's what they really are. 520-333-4543 is the number. Be taking your calls for the whole hour. Good evening, you're on the air. Uh, how you doing, Bill? Good. Yeah, I got like a uh, question. I want to know a topic about, um, that I know that, um, brings smoke that comes out of both your ears and stuff. But what that is, is the, uh, the, el the elimination of the income tax versus the, uh, flat tax. And um, I know that you say, like, with the income tax, that it's unconstitutional and stuff. And uh, I myself... Um, it's not only unconstitutional, but there's no law passed by Congress that requires me to file and pay it. Right? I've put out a challenge for years now. Not one person can produce such a law. And, um, see, I, my problem with that is, that, I mean, is um, what, what about the uh, revenue to um, provide, for, uh, provide for a uh, defense, you know, by the federal government? That's not my problem. My problem is making sure that a Hitler doesn't take over this country and cause us to come under unconstitutional despotic rule. The Constitution gives the government the means to do what it needs to do within its own jurisdiction, including taxes, excises, levies, imposts, duties, all kinds of things. They could even conceivably go into business, and they've already done that, we know. Right. But... Uh, are you trying to say that we should ignore the Constitution? We should throw our freedoms away so that we can have what was it you said? You know, provide for provide for defense. That the, you know, the, the the main role of the federal government is to provide for for um, defense. No, that's defense not purposes. That's yeah. not the main role of the federal government. It's not the main role well, at all. It's constitutional, isn't it? I mean, to, you know. Um, well, to, see, my point is that the only um, standing no we're not living in 1890 anymore, and then we have countries like um, so what North Korea, so what we and have China so, and so what so what we have a law. It's called the Constitution. I understand that. I understand, they have. I understand your point completely. I'm not. I'm not it's disagreeing. Not a you. point. It's the law. They have to stay within the law. If they're not within the law, then they're committing treason. They have become despots. They become tyrants. They are no longer our government when they do that. And I don't care how they justify it. And I don't care how many of you misinformed people who don't care about your Constitution or your rights or your protections under the law want to know how they're going to pay the military. It's not my concern. My concern is that they don't, don't destroy the Constitution, take away our rights, you know, are we, it's, it's are a conundrum, you know what I mean? I, I mean, no, I agree with everything you're saying. I don't want to. It's not a conundrum. It is not a conundrum. It is not a conundrum. It is not. They are required by the law 
the Constitution to stay within the limits and the restrictions of the Constitution. I agree. If they can't do it, then they don't have a military or whatever it is they're trying to fund that they don't have enough money for. We have militaries in the states. We have the militia. We have the National Guard. Yeah, but the problem is, uh, you know, look what, look what Clinton, during the Clinton years, the Chinese um, actually used, used money to influence the, the election in 96 and stuff by buying up officials and so forth, you know? Yeah. What's and that, what's, what's and that? the problem with that is that... What's that got to do with income tax? Well, the point being is that the Chinese are making the move with the, with the Hudson Wen Poa with the uh, Panama Canal and um, so? moving into our hemisphere. I'm going to ask, ask you again. I'm, gonna have a pretty, uh, I'm going to ask. Military, I'm going to you know? ask you again. What's that got to do with the income tax? For providing a defense. Who's in countries who's, like China and North Korea? Who's in or, charge of the defense? Who's in charge of the defense? Yeah. Who's the commander? In people, the people. Who's, who's the commander in chief? Bullshit. President. Okay. Now who bought the president? Well, the Chinese are trying to. The Red Chinese are trying to. According to you, you said they did. Well. So what? So I'm going to ask you again. What's that got to do with the income tax or the defense? And Clinton wanted to sell us down the tubes to the Red Chinese while he was president. He did a pretty good job of it, and we couldn't have won a war with them during his presidency. And it has nothing to do with the income tax. It has to do with official corruption by the socialist, communist, puke fakes, lying traitors in Washington, D.C. Yeah, but my and no amount of income tax is going to overcome that. Yeah, but my, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say, though, is that I don't support the income tax per se, but all I'm trying to say is that there's got to be some kind of revenue stream to have you ever, provide have you ever, defense against that type of... I mean, against have, countries that are hostile to our interests. You have know? you ever read the Constitution? Yes, I have. And then what does it say about how the government can raise money? Well, it can be done through uh, tariffs and, like you said, uh, excises and imposts and stuff like that. And a lot of other things, too. Yeah. It says Congress can levy a tax. They can even levy a direct tax as long as it's a portion according to the population of each state. Right. That's true. So, well, what's that got to do with the income tax? Uh -huh. They can levy a tax for as much money as they want. <laughs> they can take everything out of your pocket that you ever had or ever will have if they want. But they have to do it under the law. Right. And the way they're getting away with it is stupid people like you who don't understand how the law works is willing to say, well, even though it's unconstitutional is bad, and even though I don't support it, we need the income tax because we must have a defense. You're stupid. Do you hear me? Thank you for calling. 520-333-4543. I don't cut you any slack, folks, when you're stupid. You see, you might want to give away your freedoms. And if you do, I suggest you go to Cuba. Castro will be happy to take your freedoms, provide you with a military, give you a machete, and designate a portion of the cane fields for you to cut, and you can be happy. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello, Mr. Cooper. This is Marie from Colorado. Hi, Marie. Hi. When you took your vacation at the end of June, the beginning of July, one of the broadcast programs that WBCQ ran was the program that you had where you asked people to call in and tell you who they were going to vote for and just a brief why. And sometimes you'd ask them, like someone who said he was voting for Howard Phillips or another person who said they were voting for um, Charles Collins or something like that. Yeah. Um, you ask, do you really think he has a chance of getting in? And that person paused for a moment, and then he said, well, I think it's enough of us vote for him, yes. And uh, then at the end of the program, you told us to all look at Article 2, Section 1 in the Constitution. Right. And that everything is basically, you your vote counts at the local and state level, but the Electoral College is the one that puts the president in. That's exactly right. And uh, my husband and I were rather surprised at that. So we actually, we have this um, little booklet that has the Constitution, Bill of Rights, Declaration of Independence, and it came from Liberty Lobby, and we picked it up at a, a gun show. Uh -huh. And so we looked it up, and sure enough, I, I read it all out loud to my husband, and he's, we were there like, wow, we actually as citizens should be more involved at the state level where everything really counts 
with this electoral college. That's right. And, you, and you, uh, we were really surprised because you never hear anybody promoting that. Well, you know why? Because very few people, until I started challenging people in this broadcast many years ago, very few people in this country have ever seen a copy of the Constitution, much less read it. They don't even know what their country is. And, yes. and the only yes. place you can find it is in that document. That is where the United States of America dwells. Mm-hmm. Nowhere else. Yes, that's true. So anyway, I have this little booklet of the Constitution out. And you are right when you said it's not very long and it's written in plain English. And so it was on the kitchen table for a couple of days. So I picked it up and I read it. And I was very, very impressed. You're right. It's not long, and it is in plain English. Yeah. But what really impressed me, and I just have to tell you this, and folks, if you haven't picked up a Constitution yet, read it. You'll be very impressed. Article 1, you don't go too far into it, just Section 8. It's the duties of Congress. Right. And it's like, wow, is that all they're supposed to do? That's all they're supposed to supposed do. Supposed to do. And look at look at all the other stuff they got their fingers into. Yeah. Where they don't belong. Exactly. There's nothing in there about they're not, you know, my goodness gracious, they're not supposed to blackmail the states into doing what they want them to do. There's nothing about being involved in education, in child care, and absolutely nothing in social services. Actually, the Constitution forbids it. The Constitution uh, says that not any of the states... Mm-hmm. can make a treaty with any other state. Yes. When the state of Arizona makes an agreement with the federal government to get money from the federal government so that they can build highways, and there's strings attached that says if they do that, they have to teach our children certain subjects and use certain textbooks, that is what's called a treaty. An agreement between states is a treaty. Uh-huh. The state of Arizona is a sovereign state, and the United States of America is a sovereign state. It's forbidden. Yeah. It is absolutely forbidden to do that. And also, um, I'm not sure I'm reading this right, but on um, where it comes to Article 3, where it talks about the Supreme Court, mm-hmm. and uh, in listening to the debate where um, Bush and Gore were debating, and the subject came up about the Constitution, so I really, after listening to you, I kind of pricked up my ears, even though I never read the Constitution since I was in high school. Um, and as they were t- one, uh, Gore had said he believed that the Constitution was a living document to be interpreted as we went along and as need rose, and uh, <laughs> that it, since it was a living document, it could be changed because all living things change. And I thought that sounds kind of hokey. And then Bush came back with, well, this is where we disagree. I believe that a law is set in stone or something to that effect, he said, and that it should be applicable for all people at all times and so that you know what it is said and that it cannot be changed to suit whatever uh, situation you're in. And I just wanted your input on that. No, it cannot be. This document mm-hmm. cannot be changed at all or interpreted nor the meaning changed by anyone whomsoever except by the method so stated in this document for doing that, and what is it called? It's called an amendment. Oh, okay. And the document explains exactly how an amendment can be passed and adopted as a part of this Constitution. And if it's not done, then it is not a part of this Constitution. You can't change anything in this. So that means that the Supreme Court can't be pulling out all of these straws that it pulls out like somehow in here we're supposed to find where we have a constitutional right to have an abortion? No. No. I didn't think so. I didn't see anything in there because I thought, let me see if they see anything about having an abortion. No, the, the, (laughs) the Constitution divided the power amongst three branches of government. The executive, the judicial, and the legislative. Mm-hmm. The executive and the judicial cannot legislate. That's the legislative true. cannot perform executive tasks, nor give orders to the military forces, nor can they perform the judicial functions mm-hmm. of government. Mm-hmm. But here's what the Supreme Court is doing. The Supreme Court, when it does that, 
is grabbing the power of the judicial, or excuse me, the legislative branch. They're legislating. You can't have an amendment to the Constitution except through certain means, and they all involve Congress. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, isn't the um, judicial branch of the states doing that when, um, like here in Colorado, we passed that uh, by popular vote, not this past election, but the one before, about um, the homosexuals not giving them um, special minority status, you know, like handicapped people and that, and then the um, all people must the be. went and overturned it and says, well, that's not right. Well, and it's like, what, where did the power of the people come in when we vote something and then it's overturned? It has nothing to do with the power of the people or the power of the state Supreme Court. It has to be according to the law. And the law says all citizens must have equal status under the law. Therefore, you cannot grant special protection or special status to one group, minority or not. That's unconstitutional in every state and in the United States. That was a political decision, and your Supreme Court legislated against its own constitution to give special status to a group of people, making them, and actually making you, not equal under the law. That's correct. Yes, it elevates, exactly elevates that group above all other citizens under the law, and that is, is wrong. That's despotism. Yeah. And it only yeah. happens in democracies. And if you want to find out what kind of government we have and what kind of government we're guaranteed, read Article 4, Section 4. Article 4, Section 4. Yep. Mm, okay, that's about amendments. Nope. Article like, 4, Section article, 4. Oh, I memorized, section 4. Oh, I memorized yeah. the Constitution years ago. The United uh, States shall guarantee uh, to every state in this union a republican form of government and shall yes, protect sure each of them against invasion and on application of the legislature or of the executive when the legislature cannot be convened against domestic violence, period. Mm-hmm. So what is all this talk about a democracy? I don't know. The doctor, democracy is a form of despotism. It is tyranny of the majority over the minority. Mm-hmm. Yes, and uh, what people don't seem to understand, like here in the news, there, at least our local news here is talking about how they're going to try and um, keep up the, this wave of trying to uh, change the electoral college so the president has voted in by a direct vote of the people. And what people don't seem to realize is the pressure that can be put on them and manipulated like you read in all of these different foreign countries all over, you know, some of the people standing out there with machine guns knocking on your door, your place of business saying, hey, you know, you better vote such and such a way. And here in the United States, you think that can't happen here? Sure can, but you, don't, you wouldn't want it to happen anyway because most yes. people are ignorant and too stupid to vote for president. They don't, even know, they don't even know what their country is. They don't know anything about the Constitution. They don't know when, they're, when, when somebody's a good candidate or a bad candidate. They haven't got the slightest idea. They vote from emotionalism or because somebody looks nice on television or they like the way they sound or they're telling them they're going to give them something. They're not voting in the best interest of their state, their community, or of this country. Mm-hmm. That is very true. They vote out of ignorance and stupidity and selfishness, greed. Oh, especially. The founding fathers knew that. They wrote about it. They talked about it. That's why they gave us the Electoral College. And the electors were supposed to be chosen by the legislatures. Mm -hmm. But they, they worded it wrong. They said the method to be chosen shall be determined by the legislature of each state. When what they really intended or meant was that the legislature choose the electors in order to more uh, properly represent the sovereignty of the state and the people who lived in that state. Mm-hmm. So the legislatures in most states have a popular election to determine who the electors are going to be. In all these years, the American people thought they were voting for president. When they were voting for Joe Blow, the car dealer, who's going to go be an elector. And they don't know that Joe Blow doesn't have to vote the way they want him to, even though state law may require him to, because once he becomes an elector, he's no longer subject to state law 
but to the dictates of the Constitution, which says he can vote any way he wants to. Oh, that's fascinating. Isn't it? Yeah, it sounds like I should go and find out where I could get a copy of our state constitution to find out what it says. That's right, because I'll tell you something that you don't understand and most Americans don't understand. Uh-huh. Your first loyalty is to God. Right. Your second loyalty is to your family. Yeah. Your third loyalty is to your state. Your fourth loyalty is to the United States of America. Then, you know, our, in our um, textbook, the Civil War is written up all wrong. It was originally called the War Between the States, and it had nothing to do with slavery. It had everything to do with states' rights and whether the states had the right to secede from the Union when they uh, didn't agree with uh, no. everything that was no. happening. No, that's not true. The, then what is The true? states did have the right to succeed from the Union, and they did, and nobody was stopping them, and everything was fine until a bunch of people who wanted to have a war with the Union fired upon Fort Sumter in Charleston Harbor. So as long as there wouldn't have been a first shot... If, there, the South, uh, if the South had never fired on the North, there would never have been a civil war, period. That's fascinating. It sure is. Yes, it is. They're teaching junk in our schools, lies, crap. They teach blacks that the Civil War was fought over, over slavery. And the blacks look to Lincoln as their hero. Lincoln didn't want to free the slaves. In fact, he, he, he said that he was never going to do that. Mm-hmm. And told the North got in big, big trouble. They were on the brink of actually losing the war. The Southern yes. Army was on the doorstep of Washington, D.C., Yes. And the federal agencies were packing up, getting ready to flee to the north. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When Lincoln gave the Emancipation Proclamation in the hopes that the slaves would rise up against their southern masters. But it didn't happen. No. Almost everybody in this country is laboring under lies, deceptions. Mm-hmm. They're ignorant. Yes. And because they're ignorant and because they don't care about the truth, that makes them stupid in my estimation. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, and just one more thing and then I'll get off and let somebody else talk. But I also read in here in the, um, the Bill of, uh, you know, the Declaration of Independence, uh-huh. and it lists uh, <laughs> many, many, many reasons why the, um, the colonies felt they had a right and a duty to before God and their fellow citizens that they should go and um, be separated from Britain. And I'm reading some of this stuff, and I'm thinking, you know what? A lot of this, is, most of it actually, is happening today. And, and hundreds of times worse than it ever did when our founding fathers made that fateful decision. So, anyway, I just wanted to say thank you. to me. Most people have listened for years and they still don't have a copy of the Constitution. Still haven't well, read it. Still haven't got a clue. They're still ignorant. They're still stupid. And they're still sitting there with their thumb in their ear wondering, mm-hmm. what happened to my country? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay, you take care and God bless you. Thank you for calling. Okay. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Seek ye the truth and the truth will make you free. Good evening, you're on the air. Hello? Yeah, hi. Hello? Okay, can you hear me? I've said hello twice. Okay, I'm sorry. What do you want me to say? Well, a fan's ringing in my ear. The way they do it here, Bill, is that... Are you familiar with Tempest? Now, what, you, what exactly are you talking about? The FBI about? is getting in the guy's computer. Okay. Well, I'm turning it. Okay. I, all computers I'm familiar, radiate. I'm familiar with Tempest, but not everybody is. Okay, all computers radiate. If they can get it within the close proximity of wherever the computer was, uh, they just pick it up on, on the radio. Well, they can see your screen that way. Oh, yeah. But they're talking about tapping the keyboard. Well, they physically tap it. Physically, in some manner, tap the keyboard. Well, they wouldn't have had 
to unless the guy had a screen. A screen uh, that's that's, that's, not, that's yeah. not the point. <laughs> the point is, well, the point is yeah, that's they're what they're the doing. They're physically tapping the keyboard. Well, that's right. And it's against the law, regardless unless they could prove the guy done something wrong. I think they're illegally entering the house and doing it. That's what I oh, think. Sure. But I don't know that. Well, there, there's another scam now with, with Internet providers, for example, like mine. They do it under a guise of providing uh, email screening, but it's all routed through a place in, in California, which I'm sure is a shell operation for the FBI or CIA. Well, or how, how do you know that? Because I hear this all the time, but it's, you know, depending on who you listen to, it's in Virginia or it's in Montana or it's uh, a special I, hub down in Texas. Oh, no, I you run a trace route. Pardon? You're, uh, you run a trace route, and it'll show you where the guy's at. Show you where what guy's at. All well, you can do is where the screener is. Okay. All you can do with a trace route is find out where your email goes before it gets to where it's delivered. Oh no, but I, I can I can run a trace route and tell who the screener is. Where he's How can you tell? All you can tell is what hubs it goes through. Okay. And it could be routed through all different kinds of hubs, and one one day it might go through northern a route to where it's going, and another time it might go through the south. Exactly. So how do you know it's going to some hub and there's a screener there? Because I ran the trace route on the provider that does the screening for my ISP, and he is located in, I believe, someone in... How do, how do you know he does a screener for your ISP? Pardon me? How do you know he does screening for your ISP? Because it, it was the guy announced that most people don't, don't understand what's going on, but it was all email to me, and I'm sure other people too, it the routes through this screener and then it comes back to your ISP and, and all How do you know it's a screener? You haven't answered my question yet. <laughs> because that, that is the way it's advertised. They're, they do it under the guise of, of and they do filter junk mail. How do you know that? Because I get, I get messages from them. Messages from who saying what? From the screener saying we have we have quarantined such and such pieces of mail, blah blah blah. But the crux of the thing That's is that again, all of my mail they, goes through them. They have absolutely no right to do that unless you agreed to it when you signed the contract with the ISP. Oh, the, the ISP put that in. Doesn't matter. I, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't matter. matter. They still do not have any right to do it whatsoever unless you sign a contract agreeing to allow them to do it. Well, and it well, should bother you. Should bother everybody. Yeah, it's because, all, what it boils down to, your choice is either go to a different ISP or just continue if I have nothing to hide. I, I'm absolutely amazed at that. It's no different than somebody at the post office opening every letter that you send and every letter that you receive and reading it. Would that bother you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah! Wow, light just came on. Another stupid sheeple. Where are you people coming from? Thanks for calling. I bet that woke some people up. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> Your email is mail. It's no different than writing it on a letter, putting it in, sticking a stamp on it, and sending it through the Postal Service. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello. Hello. Hi, uh, Bill. Um, I would like to say right off the bat, um, I'm an absolute outright people. Well, most people are, but you know what? you got a leg up on all the rest of them because you know it and they don't. Well, here's, here's my question. How do I go about getting a, 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 like a, a pocket pamphlet of the Constitution of the United States? Well, are you listening to me? Yeah. Okay, you can write the Commission on the Bicentennial of the United States Constitution. Okay. 808. Seventeenth uh -huh. Street, Northwest, mm -hmm. Washington D.C. Okay. Two zero 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 six. Two zero 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 six. Yeah. And would you give me the heading of that again, at the very beginning? Commission. Yeah. Commission. On the bicentennial. Of the United States Constitution. Oh, the United States. Okay. There's also a number you can call. 202. 202. USA. USA. Dash 1787. Dash 1787. Now, okay. if, you, if you can't get it there, you can get a copy of the Constitution from any United States government printing office. 
You can also find a copy of the Constitution at any library. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. You can also get uh, a copy of the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and a whole bunch of other things from the uh, Fully Informed Jury Association. I don't have their address here or their phone number, but maybe somebody will call in and uh, give it to you. But I'm just amazed that Americans don't even know where to find a copy of their Constitution. Library is the first thing that comes in to anybody, or should come into anybody's mind. Good evening. You're on the air. Hello. Hello. Bill, uh, Bill from Illinois. Yeah. yeah. Bill, I went up at a uh, Joe McCarthy Memorial this last spring up in uh, Wisconsin, uh -huh. and um, Eustace Mullins uh, gave a speech at this uh, group that uh, annually honors uh, Joe McCarthy. Um, I talked to him for a few minutes. And are, I you, are, excuse me, are you on a cell phone or something? Yeah, I am. Get off and call me back on a regular phone. It, you're, okay. It's really bad connection. Really bad. Okay, I'll call back. All right. 520-333-4543 is the number. Uh, I wish I could have kept him on, but you weren't going to hear what he had to say. Good evening on the air. Mr. Cooper, comment in Pennsylvania. Hi, Carmen. Uh, the World Almanac has the complete Constitution in it and the Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights on it. Which World Almanac? The one that's used by the Daily News, the, the one you buy for like six dollars at the uh, stationery store. There's lots of different world dominants, all printed by different publishers. We need to know the one because I've got two here that don't have it in it, and I've okay, got another. It's called the World Almanac. Give me one second, I have it right here. Okay. Oh yeah. He's going to get the publisher. All we need is the name of the publisher, so that when they pick up the World Almanac, they can make sure it's the right one. Otherwise, they'll get one that's published by somebody who maybe doesn't have it in there. Because the World Almanac, by definition, is not concerned with politics in individual countries except as statistics. Are you back? Hello? I have to get back here. All right. And when you call in, folks, to give us information, make sure you have all the information. Okay? 520-333-4543 is the number. Good evening. You're on the air. Hi, Bill. Is there Turn down my radio. It's Joe from Boston. How are you doing? All right. I'm going to send you the donation this month. Uh, I heard something on the radio which upset me, and you may be interested. Uh, on the, I think, think it was Billy Dean. It was the other night about prepaid legal. I don't know whether you heard it. Some people are having some problems with them, and they're not happy with them. So I just wanted to mention that they uh, didn't get into it. They uh, do. You, do. You, do you have the specifics? Uh, only part of it, they talked about stocks and then it faded out. And Talked about what? Something about stocks and how these attorneys are buying stocks in the company and HMOs and it faded right out. They started to talk about it. Uh, don't spread rumor. No, it, I'm just telling you what they said on the radio. You, you haven't told us anything. What uh, you did is come in and you've said you, you've uh, uh, maligned a company that I happen to know is a very good company. And you won't even, can't even give us specifics on what you're talking about. I will about. try and find out more. If Next I time, find out before you call. Yes, okay. Okay. I wanted to mention something else uh, about this, the, the sheeple, which you mentioned. I spoke to uh, someone about uh, Congressman Condon. Is that his name? Am I saying it right? Condon? We don't, we're not interested in, 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 uh, in that stuff on this podcast. Okay, I just wanted to, to say about the people that... We're not, so we're not even interested okay. on this broadcast about Congressman Condon, who is innocent until he's proven... I agree him. with you. But the thing that upset me is people say, it's okay to search your home without a warrant. What do you have to hide? I said, that's not the point, sir. I said, we have rights. People are giving away their rights. I just wanted to point that out. That's because they're stupid. Yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> Nine times out of ten, they don't even know they have those rights. That's, that's right. Okay, thank you. You hear people all the time banning them. Well, I get my Fifth Amendment right. Yes, and what they are, they can't tell you. Yeah, I know. Thanks for calling. Thank you very much. Bye. Folks, don't ever call this broadcast to give us information unless you have the information. And I mean all of it. Don't call and recommend a book if you can't tell us who wrote it and who the publisher is, and the name of the book. Don't call and cite something that you read in a newspaper article unless you can tell us the newspaper, the date it was printed, and the page in that newspaper. Don't call and start maligning somebody, either a person or an organization, 
or uh, a church or anything unless you've got your facts straight and can state them. Good evening. You're on the air. Yeah, Bill, it's Bill Hill and I come back again. Um, I was up at the uh, Joe McCarthy Memorial this last April, and uh, Eustace Falls was a keynote speaker there, and uh, I got a chance to talk and ask me if he knew you. He said that you guys used to hang out together for a while there. Hang out together? Yeah. Uh, that's not true at all. Is that true? No, he just flat-ass lied to you. We were both uh, uh, invited to London to speak at Wembley Hall, um, years ago, and we stayed in the same hotel. And uh, in, in fact, uh, I, I read him the riot act because of his racism that came out when we were all sitting around a table there talking. And uh, he just w was insulting to a lot of people. Hmm. Have you read his book, Curse of Canaan? Uh, yeah. What did you think of that? I think it's bullshit. <laughs> Total bullshit. Well, that's about it. I just want to check up on that because I heard something else, though. Now, this, that, well, it's just not true. No, I've never hung out with him. I've never been his friend. Uh, I met him in London. Um, I never talked to him very much. I was at a large table where there's a whole bunch of people sitting. Uh, when he just absolutely insulted a lot of people at the table who were not of his race. Really? Yeah. Well. It was disgusting. I well, see, I, I believe racism is a plague upon the human race. Well, I, It's a I, plague. I don't believe it at all. I, I pretty much, uh, my business, I work with yeah. everybody. And there's, two, there's two things in this world that cause most of the problems that everybody, well, three things, actually. Most of the problems that we ever have whether they're on an individual local level or a state level or a national level or an international level and that's greed, religion and racism if we could eliminate those three things from our society uh, we'd pretty much have it made now I'm not talking about religion as your own personal religious views I'm talking about churches big churches with lots of money that tell people what they're supposed to believe and make them act in certain ways that sometimes causes terrible things to happen in this world and in this country in this state everywhere okay yeah thanks for calling yeah i think eustace mullins is full of crap good evening you're on the air comment again and it's prime media p-r-i-m-e-d-i-a they're out of Marwa, new jersey for what for the almanac the world almanac okay prime media and i find one every other year and they've always had the constitution in it okay you ready yep thank you thank you bye-bye five two zero three 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 four five four three good evening you're on the air how you doing bill good This is Mac from New Jersey. Hi, Mac. And uh, I always carry a constitution in my pocket. I'm a little nervous. No, take a deep breath and relax. Okay, I have a question. I have made out a little uh, uh, note that I keep sending uh, my congressmen and my senators, and I never get answers from them. And you're still sending the note? Yes, and I and Why? want to know. No, wait, 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 wait a minute. Let's back up now. Okay. You've been sending it. How many times have you sent it? I sent four times to Saxton. Okay. I sent it to Bradley when he was in. Uh-huh. Lautenberger. Uh-huh. All these people previously... Wait, wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. I asked you a question to get an answer. I got my answer. Now I'm going to ask you another question. Okay. Why are you still sending the note? Because I want to know whether the Constitution is still in effect or it isn't. But they've already told you something already. Okay. They, don't, they don't care about you or your question, and they're not going to answer it. Thank you. That's your answer. I know that. Okay. But what I'd love to do is get a signature that would, that would tell me that. They're not going to give you a signature that will tell you okay, that. Okay, so I'm on my own. Because the minute they do that, they know you have a right to take up arms against them. And that's exactly why I want them to... I was figuring maybe I could send it, you know... Uh, The Supreme Court has already said the Constitution's not in effect. It says, wherever, wherever treaties 
conflict with the Constitution for the United States of America, the treaty shall take precedence. Whenever there is a conflict between the United Nations and the Constitution for the United States of America, the United Nations Charter will take precedence. And any judge considering such cases shall have copies of both in front of him. It's a Supreme Court ruling. Okay. I keep trying to tell people that when we joined the United Nations and passed the UN Participation Act in 19, you know, back way back then, after right after the war, we joined a world government in formation. And the United States of America has been the responsible party that created that world government, gave them the land to put their buildings on, sent people to write the United Nations Charter, have funded them over all of these years. And it is the avowed and stated policy of the United States government to create a world government, disarm all peoples and all nations, create a world police force and all of that is treason and it's all out in the open nothing is hidden it's all available to anybody who wants to look for it I'm, I'm well informed on that then why are you for three times and I I started years ago with Philip Wiley's generation of vipers and I've been on on this for, for, since then but uh you, you've answered my question I know I'm on my own no, you're not. I'm with you. I understand that. <laughs> that I do understand. There is nobody in Washington, D.C. who is not committing treason, and they all know that they're committing treason. Right. I, I, I read, wrote Chuck Schumer on that, too, and I didn't get a, a damn letter. I talk, call them a traitor. Yes, they are. And uh, and I never get an answer from that, either. They are. I did write with them when she got in the, down here in New Jersey. <laughs> I'm a little uh, crazy, so I told her to secede and all this, but I never got an answer, but I did get a phone call. Having said that, though, you answered my question, and uh, thank you very much. Thanks for calling. Adios. 520-333-4543 is the number. Taking your calls for the whole hour. It's open topic, open season, open subject, open mouth, insert foot. Good evening. You're in the air. Hello? Turn the radio off. Goodbye. Can't handle that, folks. You, you ought to know by now, whether you ever call this program or not, just from listening to other programs, that when you call a radio show, you have to turn your radio off. Not down, but off. She just about blew my eardrums out. You have no idea how much that hurts. 520-333-4543. Good evening. You're on the air. Hey, Bill. Uh, hi there. Uh, the former government of Mass governor of Massachusetts, Paul Salucci, is now the U.S. ambassador to Canada. And I have him quoted in a uh, Canadian National Post saying that uh, there could be a NASA plus relationship. Um, they're calling for harmonization of border controls, law enforcement, energy, environmental, and immigration policies. You know, uh, you know what that, of achieving a more fully integrated economy. You know what that really means, don't you? It's region one. It, Here it comes. It means eventually do away with the border altogether. Uh huh. And have no restrictions uh, between the two countries. And we would actually be melded, just as you said, in region one of the New World Order. The only other one that would have to be. And this is what NAFTA and GATT's all about. The other one that has not been brought in yet is Mexico. Region 1 of the New World Order is the United States, Canada, and Mexico. He says, we have to talk about being more consistent in policies. We don't want Canadian citizens or U.S. citizens to be spending three or four hours trying to cross the border. No one wants to go down that road. <laughs> we need to use technology and some more consistent policies to make it more convenient. Sure. Yeah. Well, you know, you talked about that over ten years ago, mm -hmm. but that... Here we have it in. Yeah, you know, I, I told everybody. The impetus is there, and we know it. Yeah, I told everybody that it would absolutely happen. Do you know when GAP was first signed? Yes. When? 78? Nope. In the 1920s. Oh, well, I didn't know. <laughs> 1978 was just a, a an update, a, a revamping of GAP. That's why it's always been easier to go across the Canadian border and easier to stay longer than it is to go across the Mexican border. Right. And stay. Uh-huh. 
That's been enforced since the 1920s. Fascinating. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> I loved your response earlier to the caller about his, uh, his email being quarantined. Yeah. <laughs> that was hilarious. Uh, well, it ought to be hilarious. <laughs> I couldn't even believe that I heard it. No, neither. <laughs> it was funny. Thanks, and good night to you. You're welcome. Thanks for calling. Five two zero three 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 four five four three. Don't forget, folks, when you call, turn your radio off, please. Good evening. You're on the air. Yeah, uh, Bill. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I just uh, purchased a real interesting book. It's uh, John Quincy Adams' Letters on Freemasonry. Uh huh. And uh, I'm I'm really amazed at uh, the, some of these forefathers' uh, um. Uh, Ability to express their, uh, their the, the king's language. I mean, it, it, it's absolutely amazing. You well, they are, nobody understands the language today, and one of the reasons is so that you won't understand the law. These guys are. Uh, I mean, this John Quincy Adams, he, he's brilliant. He, 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 he's, he's an amazing writer. And uh, if if you're interested, uh, I can give out the publishing company. Of sure. this Go ahead. Everybody should read it. Okay, I don't want to plug anybody. I can tell who I got it through. Is that all right? No, just give the name of the book, the author, and the publisher. All right. And they can get the book from their own sources. Okay, John Quincy Adams, Letters on Freemasonry. And it's River Crest, that's all one word, Publishing. 1708 Patterson Road. All they need is the name of the publisher. Okay. Who's, who's the author? Oh, uh, John Quincy, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, yeah, well, it was his... Uh, I've got the book, and I'm asking who the author is. Yeah, well, okay, well... <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah, well, it was by John Quincy Adams. According to the uh, the guy who's putting out the book, who's reprinting it, it, it hasn't been available to the public since, uh, oh, like 1847. Well, right here it says, Letters on Freemasonry was originally published in 1833 as Letters on the Masonic Institution, this uncut, unabridged, and unrevised edition was published under its current title in 1847 by T.R. Marvin Press in Boston. Yeah. And it talks about John Quincy Adams and uh, his uh, uh, his uh, respective uh, letters to uh, uh, other members of this uh, state back in the Union then. Who, who and, uh, was John Quincy Adams? Pardon? Who was John Quincy Adams? John Quincy Adams was the son of John Adams. Very good. What what else is in president? The there you go. And uh, I'm uh, I'm a, about a half of a sheep, <laughs> and I'm really starting to. Just well, hey, to, that's okay. You know, I this could, is amazing. I, I could never have learned what I've learned, and I could never be doing what I do now unless at some point I realized that I had been ignorant all my life, that I'd been relying on other people to tell me the truth, and they hadn't been doing it, mm -hmm. and that I was a sheep. Mm -hmm. and that I was stupid and I had to change that uh -huh. and before I did those things I could never have made any changes or learned what I've learned and be able to pass that on to my listening audience well, and yeah, many I mean, other people of sense. I mean if a person is a stupid oh, person but people that, part of it is to get yourself with an education you'd be amazed at how people resist that <laughs> yeah I know yeah. we're out of time okay thanks for calling thanks a lot for, thanks a lot for your encouragement you're welcome alright well, folks, <laughs> oh my goodness, we're out of time, and so, good night, God bless each and every single one of you, good night, Annie Quinn Allison, I love you. <laughs>